on. Good. All right, take your Bibles, please turn over to the book of Luke, chapter number 11, chapter number 11, book of Luke, chapter number 11, and we will begin reading in verse number 1, and if you would please, when you find your place, let's all stand, if you're able to, for the reading of God's Word, and next, this Sunday, Lord willing, we're going to have our grand piano up here. So they're supposed to deliver it on Friday, and so we are excited, of course, you know, $14,000 to get that thing refurbished, and it should look like brand new. So we are excited about that, and so you'll see Mrs. Shipley back there, where is she? Right there, beating those ivories up there. It's going to be beautiful. We can't wait to see it up there, and that's going to be a blessing. All right, Luke chapter 11, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. And give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father, bless the message. Help us to learn to walk with Thee. Lord, as I prayed just a little while ago with uh, Brother Ruckel, Lord, give, a, give us a closer walk with You. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. So we've been learning about this thing of how to walk with God. And uh, we've gone through so many aspects of it. And we start a few weeks ago there in, here in Ma uh, Luke chapter 11. And in Matthew chapter 6, which is its sister verses, in that verse or those verses about this same prayer, is it talks about Jesus said, pray in this manner. So the understanding is this is not a prayer that we recite over and over again, as I was taught uh, as a young boy in the Catholic Church, I prayed, oh, I cannot tell you how many times I prayed that prayer, hundreds of times, no doubt in my mind. I remember going into a confessional booth and the, the priest telling me, you know, I, I would tell him the things I did wrong, and then he would say, well, now, Joey, you go out there and you uh, pray this number of Our Fathers and you pray this number of Hail Marys and things like that, and I believed it, and I went out, and I did it, never knowing, never understanding. It was a, by the way, it was an exciting thing in my life as a Christian when I learned that this is just Jesus' way of teaching us how to pray. And so this is a model. This is a pattern. I know I've said that for the last several weeks, but that is what it is. If you want to quote the prayer, go right ahead, more power to you. There are prayers in the book of Psalms. I quote back to the Lord, beautiful prayers. I, every once in a while, I just feel like reading them back to the Lord. But it isn't intended to do that. It was an outline to help us to pray. Now, I've said this many times. If you were to go to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, as the disciples did, did Lord, teach us to pray, Here's, this is exactly what Jesus would teach you to do. This may not be the way that you pray. If it isn't, that's okay. You, you, you need to figure out, you know, let every, man be, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. Which means you need to know what God wants you to do. I don't think God is dogmatic about a certain way to pray. But again, for, uh, what is this, learning to pray for dummies? This is what I would give to you. If you're a dummy, this is what I would give to you. And I'm dead sick because I was a dummy. I knew nothing about prayer, knew absolutely nothing. And I'm going to tell you, it was a wonderful, glorious, beautiful day, the day I learned to take that model and use it in my prayer life. And I have used it now over 43 years, that this is the way I pray, this is my model. I, de I, I deviate and go to different ways at times, but this is the model. So let's get into the model. So we start out with this thing of thanksgiving and praise. Hallowed be thy name. He wants us to hallow his name. He wants us to praise his name. I think we ought to end that also 
Be thankful. Thank the Lord for things. So take time in the beginning of your prayer. And by the way, there I believe where I would be a little dogmatic. Because if you go to Old Testament prayers, you'll always find almost in every Old Testament prayer, they always start out with praise. They always praise the Lord first. So I believe that you should. You should start off with thanking God for what He has done, praising God for who He is. Then, number two, set, next thing, if you're learning this model, if you want to take this and use this, second thing would be confess sin. Again, I know I've taken that out of order, and I know it goes later on in the prayer, but again, for me, I felt like God impressed upon my heart to, to confess my sin after thanksgiving and praise because I found that God would just stir my heart as I praised him thanked him and recognizing how great he is how holy he is how righteous he is how glorious he is it just seemed like the more I thought and praised about the goodness of God the goodness of the Lord led me to repentance and began to convict my heart of sin and I just felt like this was the best point in my prayer time to say now Lord this is I did this I did this forgive me for that forgive me for not doing this Lord forgive me not, for not loving you as much as I should love you forgive me for being covetous forgive me for being discontent forgive me Lord for complaining forgive me for my pride and for my arrogance forgive me for the lust of my eye, for the lust of my eyes and the, and the lust of my flesh and the pride of my life and so I'll go through certain things that I the Holy Spirit convicts me about and I'll get nice and clean amen how many take a shower every day? If you don't, don't raise your hand. Because we probably already know, amen? But I'm serious now. I am serious. You wash every day. And don't you think you ought to spiritually wash every day? Uh, you always, every day, you get rid of things that are in your body. Am I right or wrong? So there is a cleansing that comes about, should come in our life every single day, and there ought to be a spiritual cleansing. Enough of that. Number three, pray for the coming kingdom. Pray for thy kingdom come. And I said that first part of that is pray for the coming of the Lord. Even so, Lord Jesus come. Amen. I don't know about you, but I get more excited every day that Jesus is coming back. Then you pray for the king, because the kingdom of God is also in you, Jesus said. When you got saved, the Spirit of God came in you, Jesus came in you, and Jesus is the kingdom of God. And so you receive Jesus, you receive the kingdom of God. So your prayer should after that be, Lord, if you tarry, you're coming. And Lord, we still have to wait for you to come. Then Lord, I want the kingdom of God to be furthered in me, in my life. I want the kingdom of God to be seen in me. And then I want the kingdom of God to be furthered through me. Lord, use me to further the kingdom of God. Use me to influence people. Use me to make a difference for your kingdom. So that's the third thing. That's what I do. You do what you want to do, but I'm just doing what Jesus said to do. All right? Then number four, pray for God's will. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. You should pray every day for the will of God to be done. And, uh, and I taught about that. I went through, so, uh, I, I, sometimes I'll say, Lord, work in me to will and to do of your good pleasure. Sometimes I'll pray, Lord, teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Uh, sometimes I'll say, Lord, fill me with the knowledge of your will, which is to say, Lord, control me by the knowledge of your will, what I know to be the will of God. Control me by that with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's what Paul prayed for the Colossian church, that they would be filled with the knowledge of God, but with wisdom and spiritual understanding. So you need to pray for the will of God. Lord, teach me. Lord, work in me. Lord, Fill me, Lord, help me to delight in thy will, to enjoy your will. And don't you think if you ask God to do that, that he will do that? Absolutely, he wants his will. So, which leads us to number five. And number five, now, number five, you're probably going to think, well, this really is, isn't that important, but it is. And what does he say in Luke chapter 11, verse number three? He says, give us day by day, our daily bread. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, and verse 11, he says, Give us this day our daily bread. So, 
up until this point, we have been praying or we have been taught to pray God's concerns, what God is concerned about, what is important to God. What is important to God? God's praise is important to Him. He inhabits the praises of Israel. God shows up when you start to praise God. Amen? You want to get the presence of God in your life? You, you just start praising God, singing to God, worshiping God. I believe God will show up. Amen. So, God is concerned about His praise, God is concerned about His kingdom, and God is concerned about His will. So, prayer starts off with what God is concerned about, what's important to God. Now, the next part of this model prayer, God is now going to focus on the concerns that deal with us every day. Concerns for us. So what does he do? He instructs us to pray every day or day by day, which is basically the same thing, for our daily bread. Now, bread is the basis of a basic need in people's life. And it is symbolic of our basic needs, our day-to-day needs. So for us, and by the way, for us in this day, we basically think, you know what, I don't know that I really need to pray this prayer. Because, I don't know about you, but um, my cupboards are kind of full. Anybody like that? And I got a bit of food in our refrigerator. I know we got at least enough food for a week, if not longer. So you, you come to this and you think, well, why should I pray this? By the way, we have more food than we need. Really? I mean, uh, uh, let's face it, including myself here, probably we ought to eat less. Um, and I'm not meddling, I'm not meddling, I'm just preaching here. So if, if, if you, know, you know what they say, don't you, if the shoe fits, amen? But there is a spiritual purpose in this part of Jesus' prayer. See, everything has a purpose in this prayer. And Jesus knew that there would come a day when we would be in abundance of things. We are... We are, we are spoiled, let's face it. We are spoiled people. We got it too good in some ways, too good. And so the, regardless, of, so the first thing is, regardless of our means, how much means that you have to get things, this is simply a reminder for each of us that we should depend upon God for our daily supply every single day. That's really what it's all about. God wants us to trust him every single day. He wants us to acknowledge that. Now, the Bible is clear. The Bible talks about that every creature, everything that God has created, He takes care of. Look at, look at if you would, Psalms 104 and verse number 10. Notice here, and, and we, there's a lot of this in the Bible, but we'll just look at some passages of Scripture just to kind of give us a fun, put some meat on the bones, as they say. Look at Psalms 104, verse 10. It says here, He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give, they give drink to every beast of the field, the wild, the wild asses quench their thirst, and by them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle, and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted, where the birds uh, make their nests. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house, the high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rocks for the conies, which probably were rabbits or another type of animal like that. He appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knoweth Knoweth his going down, thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey, and seek their meat from God. So all creation, all I'm trying to show you, all of creation depends upon God, and instinctively depends upon God to meet their every single need. I've never had a raccoon come knocking at the door. Amen? Amen? Never had a little woodpecker or a birdie tapping on the window saying, feed me with a little side, feed me. God takes care of them, amen? 
Man, what a wonderful God. And then look at verse number 27 of the same psalm. He said, these wait all upon thee. They wait upon God, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. Uh, that thou givest them, they gather, thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good, thou hidest thy face, they are troubled, thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. So again, he just... The whole idea of this portion of prayer, and you should pray this prayer, is God wants us to acknowledge that He is our provider. He gives us our daily bread. He meets our every need. That's, and that's why we should bow our heads and pray before every single meal. And we should say, dear God, thank you for this food. You can say God bless it if you want to. But the bottom line is when you bow your head and you pray and you thank the Lord for what you have there. You're acknowledging, God, you are my provider. And we should, by the way, I don't know about you, but every time I bow my head in prayer, I do it in awe. Because, you know, he giveth us, I love, I think it's Psalms 104, the beginning of this Psalm, I believe, or 106, where he says, he giveth us good things to eat. I don't know about you, but I'm glad for that. I'm glad I didn't say you're going to eat oatmeal for the rest of your life. Huh? Or peas or something like that. Oh my goodness. Man, I'm glad God, we have steak and bacon and ham and man, come on, green beans. We, hey man, we can have food. Amen. I've, I think about that sort of thing. God, I'm so glad you got so many good kinds of food to eat. Twinkies. Amen. Come on. Some of you are finally getting excited. I haven't seen you get so excited in a long time. Um, but that's the truth. We ought to be in awe. And that's why we ought to just bow our head and thank the Lord for every time we eat. And I read about a little boy from a Christian home who was invited to his friend's house for dinner. When it was time to eat, everyone at the table just dug in and started eating without a moment to give thanks. The little boy looked up and asked, don't you pray before you eat? And the host, who was amused, answered, well, no, we don't. To which the little boy replied, oh, neither does my dog and picked up his fork and started eating. Amen? Um, you know what? That's true. Do because you know why? Because dogs don't understand. Cats don't understand. But we understand. And it's for that reason that we need to make sure that every day we're praying and saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because whether you are right with God or not, you have food because God gave it to you. And you ought to be grateful for that. And by the way, you go over to Romans chapter 1. One of the ways where a nation goes downhill is when they stop thanking God. And once you get in that mode in your life, you stop thanking God, my friend, you are going down spiritually when you lose the ability to be grateful and have gratitude in your heart. In fact, we, we understand what James said, James chapter 1, verse 17. He said, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the, from the Father of life. And this is good right here. With whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. You know what that means? That means God is constant, God never changes, and you know what? God is always good. God is always good. And so we know that. So whatever you have ultimately tonight, I don't care if you got a lot or you got a little, whatever you have, God gave it to you. God gave it to you. And, and if you worked hard to get that, then, then you ought to say, and I've heard people say, well, I worked hard for that. Yeah, and God gave you the muscles to do that. God gave you the eyes to do that. God gave you the hands to do that. God gave you air to breathe, water to drink, food to eat. So, hey, everything comes from the Father of lights. Amen. So we need to pray every day, Lord, give us this daily bread. And the point should also be made that basically God just wants us every day to meet with him and just acknowledge, Lord, you're good. You know what? God wants us to talk to him every day. God wants us to walk with him every single day. And you know, we see in the Old Testament so beautifully illustrated, don't we? When, when God gave to them in the wilderness the manna from heaven, that beautiful bread. And you know, God gave it to them every day. In fact, when God gave them the instructions, he said in Exodus 16, 21, and they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted. Other than on Friday, Friday they collected for Friday and Saturday because Saturday was the Sabbath and they couldn't go out 
and pick it up. But other than that, every day they had to go out and get their bread and get their daily bread. So God is all about daily provision, providing for us and taking care of us. And the truth is, I think there's another reason, I think because we have a tendency to forget that God has given it to us. And if we every day, listen now, every day if we take that time as we pray and just say, Lord, Lord, provide my needs today and take care of us. And you know what? If you're like me, when I get to that point, this is my kind of my conversation with the Lord is, Lord, you I'll say a lot of times, Lord, you know, I have everything I need right now. I, I can't think of anything that I need or really anything that I want. And that's what I tell the Lord. I say, Lord, but I also know. It's like somebody said, who was, I think it's Brother Zuber says it all the time. He said, how's it going today? And he always says, good so far. Right? And that's the way I feel when I begin the day. I say, Lord, as far as I know, I don't have any needs, and I don't really don't have any wants. And, um, but I do know something could happen to me. I could lose. You know, I, I, a lot of times I think about I've, lately, I've been thinking about in the morning, these people in Arkansas and Mississippi. And, and I use that as a thought when I get to this point in my prayer life. Because I'm thinking, what would that be like to lose everything? I, I don't know about you. It would devastate me. There are things very valuable to me that are not uh, of, of, of monetary worth, but sentimental worth that I would hate to lose. And I don't know. I remember I had a friend of mine, went away on vacation, came home, his house was all burnt down. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen today. I could have a car accident. Something could happen that, that would just devastate me. And I always tell the Lord, Lord, the Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. I don't know what's going to bring forth in this day. But I do know this, Lord. I, please help me to trust you today with all my heart if something happens. Lord, you, are, you said in your word, you are a very present help in time of trouble, and I'm going to trust that. So if something happens, I believe, Lord, that you will meet that need, or you'll teach me how to live without it. Reminds me of the story of the Amish neighbor who had a some folks move in nearby, and so he went by to greet them, and he goes over the, to them, and he greets them, and he says to them, if you need anything, let us know, and we will teach you how to live without it. And you know what? Amish people know how to live without things. And, and that's exactly the way we ought to think every single day. Lord, I've got a beautiful home. Man, I've, man I, got shoe, I got so many shoes. I've got suits. I've got shirts. I've got this. I've got that. I've got things that aren't even needs or wants, and you gave me my wants. But, Lord, I could lose everything today, and I could be out, out on the street. But I trust you today to take care of me. See, and, and another thing is, he doesn't want you to worry. He doesn't want you to worry. L look, and, and that's where he comes in in Matthew 6, after he teaches them to pray. Go over to Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 25. Worrying is a sin. You all understand that, right? It's a sin to worry. Because what it means is you're doubting God. You, you're not trusting God. You don't believe God can take care of you. So in Matthew 6, he goes through a whole thing, and we're not going to read the whole thing, but I just want you to see that he taught them to pray so they don't have to worry. Worry strangles you spiritually. Look at Matthew 6, verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you, take no thought. That means don't worry. What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than the meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowl, and then he goes back to what I just read in Psalms 104. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. They are gathered into the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. And then look what he says. Are ye not much better than they? Somebody say amen. Absolutely. Look at verse number 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with whom shall we be clothed? Don't worry about those things. For all these things do the Gentiles seek. 
For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Then verse number 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. So don't worry about tomorrow, and certainly don't worry about the past a whole lot. What he wants is, he says, sufficient unto the day you're living in is the evil thereof, is the problems thereof, is the needs thereof. So all he's trying to say is, listen, the only thing you need to do is trust God every day. Trust God every single day for those needs. Psalms 37, 3, trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. God will take care of us. When I think of daily needs being met, I think of George Mueller. George Mueller, amazing, amazing man of prayer, and had several orphanages. The very first book I ever read as a new Christian in the first year I, I was saved, I, the first biography I ever read about another Christian was the book George Mueller of Bristol. Best book. And I, I'm so glad because it taught me about prayer. It, George Mueller taught me that there were times that George Mueller felt like he was praying and his prayers were bouncing off the ceiling. That made me feel good, actually. I was glad to know that a great man of prayer struggled in prayer sometimes. Wondered if God heard him sometimes. It was a great biography. Man, it just helped me in so many ways of my life. But yet, there were so many wonderful illustrations and stories of how God, miraculous, he never told anybody ever of a need that he had. And he started that as a young man. As he knew he was going to be in the ministry, he decided. And, and you got to read it because how he even worked up to that where he had the orphanages is amazing. As a young man, he started praying about little things that we would pray for, but he just didn't. He said, I'm not going to ask for this. I'm not going to tell somebody about this. I'm going to tell God, and that's the only one. And God miraculously met every... They say every, what he prayed for is in the millions of dollars that God gave him. Let me give you one. Um, um, uh, one of those is one morning all the plates and cups and bowls on the table were empty there was no food in the larder and no money to buy food the children were standing waiting for their morning meal when Mueller said children you know we must be in time for school then lifting up his hands he prayed dear father we thank thee for what thou art going to give us to eat now they had nothing but he thanked them there was a knock at the door the baker stood there and said, Mr. Mueller, I couldn't sleep last night. Somehow I felt you didn't have bread for breakfast, and the Lord wanted me to send you some. So I got up at 2 a.m. and baked some fresh bread and have brought it. Mr. Mueller thanked the baker, and no sooner had he left when there was a second knock at the door. It was the milkman. He announced that his milk cart had broken down right in front of the orph orphanage. Can you imagine that? What a coincidence. And he would like to give the children his cans of fresh milk so he could empty his wagon and repair it. Now, if you read that book, tons of those kind of stories. Tons of those kind of stories. So many. God answered, met his daily, not just for him, but for hundreds of orphans every, they never went a day without food. God took care of them. Beautiful poem that he wrote. I've, it's in my Bible. I wrote a long time ago. Poem he wrote about prayer, about God's faithfulness. He was so consumed with the faithfulness of God. He sat down, wrote a prayer, a, a poem about prayer. It says, I believe God answers prayer, answers always, everywhere. I may cast my anxious care, burdens I could never bear on the God who heareth prayer. Never need my soul despair since he bids me boldly dare to the secret place repair there to prove he answers prayer. Man, you know what? I'm going to stop there. It's five minutes till. And I know I lost my mind to do that. But I can't get into the next point because then I'll have to go to about 7.30 and then I won't have you back here next week. But I do need, uh, but we need to stop for a moment and just let's kind of re rehash all this. So in your time of prayer, I hope you're starting with thanksgiving and praise. 
And I, ho and I hope, and I mean this, I hope you are confessing your sin. You say, I don't have any. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Don't, don't, don't do that to yourself. Yes, you do. Okay? So go confess your sin. Then, then what? Then pray for God's kingdom to come. Every day you ought to pray for the Lord to return. And you ought to pray for the kingdom of God to be a part of you and then through you and use you. And then you need to pray, thy will be done. And then you need to say, now, Lord, give me today my daily bread. And if you have everything you want, then say, Lord, I've got everything I need. Everything seems to be just fine. But just in case, just in case, I'm going to trust you today with all my heart. I'm going to try not to lean to my own understanding. And Lord, in all my ways, I'm going to try to acknowledge you. And I know, Lord, that you will direct my path and take care of me. Let's bow for prayer. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Simple, simple point, simple thought, but yet, Simple, but yet really kind of profound, isn't it? It really is. And, and again, everything in this prayer, God, Jesus is pretty emphatic about it. He said, this, pray this way. And, and if you're not praying for your daily bread, then you're probably not really trusting God like you need to trust him. And you need to have faith. And every day, acknowledge, Lord, you provide. And if I need it today, Lord, I know you will take care of me. I trust you. I wonder if somebody would say, Pastor, you know what? I wouldn't have thought it, but I needed that truth. I needed it. I wouldn't have thought so, but I do. I need it. And quite frankly, Pastor, I, I just need to start praying that every day. I don't, but I know I need to. So, Pastor, would you pray for me? Pray for me to really start getting into this model, this pattern, and start taking the time to walk with God every morning and pray to him like Jesus taught me, taught us pray. So anybody say, Pastor, I needed that this, this evening, and uh, I, I, would you help me pray for me to, to start to implement that in my daily prayer life? Would you lift your hand up good and high? If that's your need, you say, Pastor, God spoke to me about that. Amen. All right, let's all stand together. Father, you saw those hands, and Lord, we, we, got, we got so much. My goodness, we throw so much away. We give away. Uh, Lord, we, we have no idea what it really means to live day by day and yet back in bible times they did they knew what it was and this meant some more to them than it does to us but it still applies to us so help us lord trust you every day i'm so glad we have you i'm so glad that i don't have to worry about things and lord if there's something that i need i, I believe if i truly need it your will you'll provide Bless those that raise their hand. Help them to do the same. Increase our faith, Lord. Increase our faith. In Jesus' name.